I want this. I, I want this goal. I, I, I want to be financially free. I want to not struggle my whole life. And it's possible. You just eliminate the struggle. Eliminate the suffering. You don't have to have everything in the world. You don't have to have all the, all the money, all the music, all the girls, all the fame. You don't need all of it. Life needs to just not suck. You know? That's an attainable goal. That's an attainable goal. I can make that happen. Welcome back to your George, everybody. It's Cage God of your place of voices I dread for now, giving you a break from the constant term monologue that is the human mind. I want to say first, thanks for listening, viewing whatever platform you're on. If you're not already, please hit the subscribe button, drop a like in this video. Please drop a like in this video. The the engagement helps so much, honestly. And um, yeah, George Clips at George Clips Instagram, TikTok. That's, uh, that's where I post all the highlight clips, all the uh, all the updates, everything pertaining to the podcast. So if you're into the podcast, you like my stuff, you like my K Bergman channel or the podcast, I would definitely recommend following me on Instagram because where I do like all my updates and stuff. So this week has been super weird because I um, I started taking the lion's mane mushroom uh, supplement and uh, I took that for a while and then I actually I lost the the bottle and so I found it in my car and so I started re I started taking it again and. Um, it's, it's like one of those uh, nootropics that people take, that Tim Ferriss takes, like Bill Gates, like all those like big smart people take and they, like, they swear by it. And I just bought like whatever, whatever brand on Amazon a while back and I remember taking it and it was very, very similar to my experience on really low dose um, psilocybin microdosing. Uh, like you don't get high, you don't feel happy, you don't, ch you don't change anything. It doesn't really change anything as far as like how you feel. Or anything like that it just uh you think better if that's like if that makes any sense like you you think better it's more like productive thinking like instead of like constantly just complaining you complain but also you find ways like around stuff like things you wouldn't normally think about it happens when and especially when i take this lion's mane and um it's cool and uh, the last like week or so i've been traveling and uh i was with sasha for a few days in virginia and that was really really fun and I, uh, I went to New York and that was a, that was amazing. I mean, dude, New York, there are some places in this, in this world that, that just live up to the hype. They just, they just are everything you think they're going to be. New York city is one of those places. If you've never been in New York city, you, you need to go. It's unreal. It's huge. And it's like everything you think about that you want New York city to be, it is like, it is everything you want it to be. And, uh, yeah, man. So shout out New York city. And uh, it was cool because I was in um, in between New York City and Boston, where I'm at right now. I'm in Harvard University, and uh, it's cool. Yeah, I love I love Boston. I love Mass. I love Massachusetts. And I, I know some of you who watch this, probably most of you who watch this, know um, that I dated a girl who who um, was from Boston, and uh, you know that was a that was a wonderful relationship, and uh, I loved that girl very much, and and uh, I think she she loves massachusetts like she loved her hometown she always talks about it and i think it like got in my head almost like this like this like place of like wonder like a heaven of sorts almost and uh now 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 massachusetts is just that place for me even even though she's not in my life anymore i, I remember i was just walking around the cape a couple of days ago cape cod and i was like dude this place is fucking magical and i don't know how much of that is just the fact that it is or just because of like my past and like you know, just the, the emotional tie I have to this place. Um, and it's interesting because I remember th not this exact spot, the exact spot's like right back there um, on the other side of the square, but it was where me and her, like it was like one of our last times I remember vividly where we sat and it was just like really nice together. And so it was kind of weird being in the same spot, uh, but I don't know. Emotionally, I'm holding up really well. Like the things I'm thinking about aren't really pertaining to her so much. I just thought I thought I should bring it up because I'm literally sitting a couple hundred yards away from where I was, and I'm in the same state as like when we broke up. I remember being like kind of upset more the fact that I wouldn't be able to come back here to like Boston and Westford, and I loved. I just loved it. I loved it so much for some reason, and I was I was kind of butthurt about that honestly. So like the fact that I'm here right now and I'm not like breaking down crying is cool. It's nice. It's good to know that my emotional state is somewhat intact and. I want to talk a lot about, so I opened, I opened up this podcast with talking about the nootropic um, lion's mane mushrooms, or I don't, I don't know exactly, I just know there's lion's mane in it, and that's what most people talk about when they say, like, get a mushroom nootropic, uh, lion's mane's like the one main ingredient you need to have, and I definitely stand by that, the shit's amazing, and I, I've had some, like, 
crazy revelation, like breakthrough type stuff recently in the past week. Um, and I know it's because of the amount of time I've been alone. I've literally had two interactions with people. One was with this lady in my last video that I posted that I'm editing right now. And she said something like, oh, I didn't know your camera was facing that way. And I laughed and I said, haha, yeah. That, that was literally like one of, I think that, and then like, I think I said hi to like one person. Oh, I asked some girl to take a picture of me. That was the two times I've talked to, a, a spoken to a human being face to face uh, since Sasha. And that's weird. You know, you go from talking to people every day, all day, pretty much, to not t talking to anyone and just being intensely introspective, listening to podcasts. And um, since I'm doing podcasts, I'm, I'm a podcaster. I, I study podcasts as well as listen. And so it, it's a form of entertainment for me and also a form of like learning. And so I'm listening to like the Lex Friedman podcast, which is like, dude, if you have not listened to the Lex Friedman podcast, if you like podcasts like Joe Rogan, it's, it's, an, it's another level, dude. It's, this, this man's like an MIT scientist. He's, he's fucking a genius. And he has some really, really incredible guests on like Ethereum's, uh, founder they had cardano's founder we had joe rogan on all these like big smart ass people and there's so much to learn here and he's intensely he's like scientific but he's also like super sort of like spiritual he does like judo and all that stuff and i've i've come to i've come to the conclusion that only because a lot of times in life, everything feels life or death. You know, you got to pee and like nothing else in the world fucking matters. Like nothing. You got to pee right now. And like, it feels like life, life, it feels like life or death. And it, it is in your head. Like everything is in your head. And, and something I, I kind of realized, I knew this and I always knew this, but every, everything that happens in your life happens in your head. Like not that much, ha like the external things that happen, you know, you're walking around and a bird flies past you. Like, that's like, you don't really do much with that information. The only stuff that really happens is in your head, you know, like the things you think about, the revelations you're having inside your head when you're walking past someone and they're like muttering to themselves. Like, you don't know what's going on in their head. Like, they might be having like a fucking meltdown and that meltdown feels life or death to them. And I realized this because I was walking around New York City with my AirPods in the whole time, listening to music. Just fucking vibing. And I remember I took the headphones out at one point. And it was a completely different, completely different uh, thing. You know, walking around the city without the AirPods, without vibing to music. And I was like, yo, we're in our heads so much. And everyone is, you know. Anything you do, like, unless you're actively speaking or doing something. or No, unless you're actively speaking to somebody, you're in your head, you know. And so many people right now are struggling mentally. And they're like breaking down. They they feel like they can't go anymore. And, and I relate so much to this because it's, I'm I'm there too. And people who are like my age, going, dude, I I don't know how fucking long I can keep this up. Like, I'm fucking tired, and I feel that. Like, I'm tired. I'm really fucking tired. It, the days sometimes feel so long, and I'm like, yo, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck? I saw a TikTok. Uh, if I can remember, it, I'm gonna put it in right now. I become achingly aware of it every single day that I'm a literal fucking adult. Like, what the fuck is up with that? Like, this is just it for the rest of my life. I just get to get excited about days where I don't have to go to the corporate marketplace and sell my soul for money. And then I get to get excited when I have a little left over. I go out for dinner with a friend, like that. Ugh. This, I didn't even ask for, I didn't want to be here. I don't want it. Don't want so yeah, that TikTok, she's literally like, yo, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck is this? I don't want to do this. I don't want to be here. How long am I going to be able to do this? And so I've came, I've come to these two conclusions. I know I've been saying this forever. I've come to two conclusions. The first one is that you need to, you have to become financially independent, financially free. It, it's a, a necessity at this point because, uh, what's his name? Jordan, Jordan Belfort, I think the, the Wolf of Wall Street, he said this. He was like, oh, you don't need to be rich, but you need to... You need to not have to worry about money. You need to not have money be a crutch in your life. So if you're not constantly complaining about life, you're not con constantly like just being like having to pay for shit. Like that's dumb. You know, like you don't want to stress about buying a fucking Dunkin' Donuts coffee. Like that shouldn't stress you out. 
you know, you think about like, oh fuck, like, do I need to spend this three dollars on this coffee? Like, you should be able to walk around life and just like simple stuff like that. Like, not worry about paying for five dollar parking. You know, if that stuff isn't a, a hindrance in your life, life becomes a lot easier because the things. I and mean, obviously, you always have issues in your life. You have stupid shit you gotta deal with, but like, not really, not really. If you don't have to worry about the dumb shit. If you can keep that mentality of like, look, I don't need to be rich. I don't need to buy 15 Lamborghinis. But if I don't have to worry about my car payment, I don't have to worry about making rent and paying for food. That's a different life, bro. That, that is a different fucking life. And so, yeah, that's one of the conclusions. You have to become financially free. And you can. Everyone can. You know, the stories of people who come. I mean, my best friend Devin, his family came from Mexico. Immigrant family. And now they're fucking, they're loaded. You know, they got restaurants everywhere around the country. Like you can make it happen, you know, you don't need a college education, you, you can make it happen, and I'm in a place where I do have a college education, I do have all these resources, I do have a family that I can go back to, I have all those things, so I, I have no excuse not to become financially free in the next 10, 15, 20 years, and I will, I know it's going to happen, and uh, I'm very excited for that, and I, um, I saw another TikTok that was, she was saying that don't, don't complain about the place you're at right now, just think about the fact that, that the things you're doing right now will, are lending themselves to the future you, you know, and, and don't be upset and unsatisfied with where you're at because it's necessary. It's a necessary stepping stone to get to where you want to be. And uh, not that you should be completely living in the future, but just know that in the back of your head that the things you're doing right now are contributing to a bigger future and be present. Like, accept that. Accept that and acknowledge it and recognize that fact that your future is set, your future is good because of the things you're doing right now. And then just focus on the shit you're doing now. Focus on the day to day. Joel said it in our last podcast or two podcasts ago. He's like, look, I don't really think about the future like that. He goes, I just do my shit now, and I know that it'll take care of itself in the future. And that's a fact, you know. You invest your money now in good shit that's going to keep going up, and you're good. Like, what else do you have to worry about? You know, just don't think about it. And it's easier said than done, and uh, that leads to my next conclusion. Meditation. Um, dude, I, for the years now, I've been trying not to do it. Like, it's so much work, you know. Like, you The past like few months now, fitness has become less and less of a priority. Um, like working the body has become less of a priority, if that makes sense. And I've been much more interested in working the mind. You know, like learning shit, understanding stuff, having relationships, uh, making connections. Like that's the type of shit that I'm interested in. I'm not worried about hitting a big fat bench press. You know, I don't give a shit about that. I already did that. You know, I worked the body. I worked the body plenty. My body's been worked. I have not really worked the mind. Most people have not worked the mind. You know, why the fuck would you not though? You know, and that's the conclusion I came to after all this fucking introspection, meditations. And yeah, with people like Eckhart Tolle, who, whose teachings are profound. They, they really are. But there's a hole. There's a big hole. There's a big fat hole in his teachings. And not because of him. It's because of, I think, the way that most people take his teachings. He had a spiritual awakening, as many people do. You know, I had a moment five minutes maybe and um it was it was ex exactly what you think it was. it was blissful as fuck it was unbelievable and um after those five minutes it disappeared and i kind of more or less went back to normal and i've been chasing that since then you can't get that the only way you get that is by unlocking your mind and the unlocking your mind that i'm talking about is by controlling the mind having control of your thoughts you don't have control of your thoughts you don't know what you're going to think next you know, you stop for a second right now and say, what am I going to think about? It pops in your head. Where the fuck does that thought come from? Where the fuck does that thought come from? You don't know. You don't know because you can't control your mind. You don't control your mind right now. And you can. You can control your mind. You just, you just don't because most people don't meditate for an hour a day. That's the hole in his teachings that he's talking about. He had a spiritual awakening and ended up lasting his entire fucking life. How lucky is that? How lucky is that? You know, I don't know if that's true, but it's from what he said, he basically had an awakening and just walked around for two years and was blissful as fuck and now he's done like he didn't sounds like he didn't do anything um i don't think that's the fact for most people that most people are gonna have to put in work for me i have to put in that i have to put in those hours you know showing up putting even though like every meditation isn't going to be great in fact most probably suck it's the fact that you're showing up and putting in those t that time putting in the hours of like sitting there and forcing yourself to sit there and fucking be at the mercy of your mind you know be at the mercy of your mind and and fight with whatever you can i relate it to sort of like captain america when he was going against thanos and he's fucking you know punching him in the face you know slicing him with the sword and Thanos is sitting there like hey, what the fuck are you doing like you're not doing anything to me but he keeps going he puts in that work 
and eventually they came out on top. And that's kind of how I look at meditation. You just put that time in, and you have to show up. And I made a commitment to myself. I fucking hate that I have to, like, say this on camera. But, like, I'm making a commitment to myself, and I'm going to show up. I'm doing breath work. I'm going to do it because I can't fucking do this my whole life. I can't sit here and fucking have repeats and loops in my mind. Every fucking 24 hours, it loops back. And I have the same thoughts in a different context because I'm living a different day. And it's the same shit over and over and over and over and over again. I'm literally doing the same thing over and over again. I'm thinking of the same shit. It's the same theme. The, th the same, like, storyline. It's the same storyline every time. It's just a different context because I'm doing different shit. But it loops back to the same shit. It's the fact that I don't have control over my mind and I want to. You can't just have control of your mind that you have to put in that work. You have to meditate. For most people, you have to do that. And I think a lot of people go resort to working in the body, like going to the gym, um, going on walks, uh, practicing mindfulness. I've done it. I've done all that shit, dude. It didn't work. If it worked for you, then great. You know, fucking your, your congratulations. It's fucking awesome. It's lucky for you. It didn't work for me. Um, I've put my body through hell. I've ran 10 miles. You know, I've, I've walked for three hours. I've, I've done yoga. I've done all the things. They don't, they don't work for me. And I know there's a lot of fucking people who've done it too. And a lot of people... I think we try not to think about the fact that we have to sit there and be with our thoughts because it's weird and it fucking it just seems like a bunch of bullshit we don't want to do. We don't, it's like what the fuck? I'm gonna sit here and waste an hour sitting here doing literally nothing. No, you're you're putting in fucking work, dude. You're you're taking control of your mind. Like imagine a life where you do have control of your mind. Imagine not having intrusive fucking thoughts. Like imagine not having that. You know, not being depressed, not having anxiety creep up on you. Imagine not, that not being a thing. You know, a couple of that with financial freedom, work on both, you know, imagine being financially free and not having thoughts just pop up in your head. What a amazing life like that. That seems so fucking enlightened. Like that seems like that's Buddha. Like you know, you're fucking Buddha if that happens, you know, and it's possible. I just don't think enough people realize that you literally have to meditate every day and you have to actually put in the work like i don't think you have to be a monk i don't think you have to go and like like i don't want to be i don't want that so i'm not i'm not gonna go along a path that leads to like monkhood because that's not i don't want to fucking give up everything i want to be able to smoke weed i want to be able to go play video games i want to be able to shoot the shit with my friends i want to go to bars i want to hang out with people and go traveling and and do fun shit with people and i don't want to go fucking you know, be abstinent and live in the mountains by myself with a bunch of bald people. That's not the life I want. I want both, and I can make I can make it happen. I know I can. It just requires work, and most people want all that shit, but either aren't willing or just don't want to do that shit. They don't want to put in the work, and that's so many people, dude. Like especially, I remember um, when I was working at a college at College Charleston. I was RA, and I was only a year older than these kids, right? I was a sophomore. Um, and I remember just being like, like honestly fucking shocked, like honestly bewildered the fact that some of these freshmen were so like entitled, I guess the word would be like, as if like they deserve something or like people should lay down their lives for them or like, it, it was a weird, really weird realization for me. Like. It, they just like walked in the building like they owned it and not in a way where it's like yo i deserve to be here like i put on all this work like i'm just i it's just entitlement like that's all it was like they didn't do anything special and i remember i was like yo what the fuck and uh, i see that everywhere now especially especially with the kids like the younger generation because they're growing up with tiktok they're growing up vicariously living i said this on a bunch of podcasts you know they're vicariously living through these influencer people you know, they say whatever they want, do whatever they want, and they post it online. And so these kids see it, and they think they can do the same shit. The thing is, they haven't done any of that work to get there. They haven't done the work to get to that influencer level where those people are, who are doing it fucking deserve to be able to do that shit. They deserve to be able to say the shit that they're saying. Like, people like Jake Paul, Logan Paul, they're talking shit, doing all this stuff. But, like, they put in, you forget that, like, they put in four, four, four years of boxing, you know, and they put in, like, five years of, of uh, entertainment and amass millions of followers. That's the reason they can do the shit that they're doing. It's the reason they can say the shit that they're saying and pull it off you know you can't say the same shit you haven't done that you know and i'm actively doing the shit that sucks right now like right now on my videos on my instagram you can see it like well i don't post all of it but 
I'm just telling you right now, I'm doing all this shit that sucks. You know, I'm sitting there in introspection and meditating and breath work. Like, I'm doing that stuff that no one wants to... Like, it's not fun to film. Like, it's not interesting. It's just, like, it's fucking necessary. Like, it's really, really necessary. And if you want that, if you want that life where you don't have anxiety, you don't have crippling fucking depression, you don't have triggering thoughts, triggering moments, you know, triggers. If you don't want that, that is... A, that is emotions and feelings having control of your mind you know imagine you controlling that imagine you having like control over that you wouldn't have those things that you wouldn't have triggers you know if you want to feel that you can choose to and that's different because it's not a trigger you, you you are saying i want to feel this right now boom and you feel it and that's different and that's healthy you know and I've had, I've had just so many fucking weird, scary moments in my head where, like, for example, like, I saw some video where the girl was like, yo, social media is dying. And I was like, damn, what am I fucking doing? I'm trying to, like, post my shit and help people. And social media is dying. What, what's the point? Like, what's the point of amassing 10,000 followers if they're just going to disappear one day, you know? And that's when I, I had this crazy revelation. I was like, yo, I was walking out around New York for the, pretty much to take in the city but also to get this shot of the empire state building and i did and i was walking around boston today boston doesn't have nearly as many like crazy specific sites it's just the city and i was for the first 30 minutes i was walking around trying to find like a picture trying to take like the perfect shot and i was like yo why the fuck am i doing this like especially if i'm not going to post it what, what am i doing why am i living for the photo why am i living for the content that's dumb that's dumb as shit, you know? Especially if you don't have a plan. You're just walking around looking for stuff, you know? And it takes away from the experience. Like, what the fuck am I doing? And so I, just, I literally just said, all right, fuck. I'm, I'm going to just explore. If I see something cool, I'll take a photo. If not, no pressure, you know? And I took the pressure off my shoulders. And uh, it wasn't perfect, you know? It didn't completely work, but it, it gave me some peace of mind. And I'm going to try and live that way. Like, this trip, in some ways, was is exactly what i needed like a, and this, one of the guys at the restaurant was like you're gonna find yourself out there and i, I knew that was probably true but after a couple of weeks i was like you know i don't know if i fucking am and uh i am i really am through intense introspection it's impossible not to it's literally impossible not to find yourself when you're this fucking in your head it's just a product of like what you're doing you know and you're putting yourself in certain situations or you're making moves towards a certain goal, that goal's going to show up. The goal's going to come. The result's going to come. You know, in the same way that I'm putting in the hours podcasting, I'm putting in the hours traveling, I'm putting in the hours of self-reflection. And there's a certain goal that comes. There's a certain result that happens as a result of those things. You know, it just, it can't not happen. You know, with like, with dedicated focus toward a goal and active and like actual action how the fuck does that not result in the, the end goal you know and um i kind of stopped putting in so much focus on that end goal and kind of started to really like dive into the process of it and you know you hear people like gary v talk about that all the time like fall in love with the process fall in love with the process and it's easier said than done dude it really really is it's so much easier said than done and i think it, it requires intense introspection it requires it's fucking necessary there's no way around it. There, there isn't a way around it. For everyone, I think. Or everyone who thinks like me. who Everyone who like struggles mentally. And, and feels like there's no way out. You know, there is. It's just, you have to literally fucking meditate. You literally have to fucking sit with yourself. And there was some philosopher that said, humanity's biggest problem is we can't sit in a room alone and be with our thoughts. We just can't do it. We can't do it. We have to pull out our phone. We have to distract ourselves. And that's because we just, I don't know why. We just... It's just hard. It's scary. It's fucking... It takes forever. Like, I... For me, I, I put a six-month minimum on this meditation. I'm like, look, it's going to take at least... It might take less. I, I don't I don't think it's going to take any less than six months. But, like, intense breath work or breath work with the Wim Hof method, intense meditation, and uh, just sitting there. You know, some of my meditations, like, I split it up. Like, I have, like, a third guided, a third not guided, a third with music, 
you know that kind of thing and so it's like kind of like switching it up because it's like different like sometimes it's easy to meditate with music like when you're like vibing to like binaural beats sometimes it's easy to just sit there and like you're not really meditating you're just like being present but that's like a form of meditation so i do like all three so i do one one third of it is i'm literally just sitting there with no music no nothing just like really sitting there and battling my fucking inside demons like battling my mind like i'm literally in a war in my head like i'm like every time a thought comes i'm like no you know like i'm really battling and then a third of that is breath work, where I'm literally sitting in there focusing my breath. And I do the Wim Hof Method, that's guided. And then I do a third of it with music or binaural beats or guided meditation. And I do all three, because I think they're all necessary. And um, I want this. I, I want this goal. I, I, I want to be financially free. I want to not struggle my whole life. And it's possible. You just eliminate the struggle. Eliminate the suffering. You don't have to have everything in the world. You don't have to have all the, all the money, all the music, all the girls, all the fame. You don't need all of it. You just need to not suffer. You need to not, like life needs to just not suck. You know, that's an attainable goal. That's an attainable goal. I can make that happen. I can make life not suck. That's possible. It's going to take some work. It's going to take a few years of work and it's going to take a few years of suffering. It's going to take a few years of sucking, but I can make that happen. I can make a life that doesn't suck, you know? And so can you. You really can. But you have to decide for yourself. You know, there's only so much I can say. I'm only just saying what I'm going through in hopes that maybe you take something from that and, and apply it in some way. But I'm just telling you right now, from my standpoint, this is what's going to work for me. I know it's going to work because I'm doing it right now and it's working. It is working. I'm getting better at this shit. And it could work for you, you know? And I listen to people on people's podcasts and I, I take things from it. And they're not specifically telling me, hey, do this, do that, you know, this will work, this will, this won't work. But they're saying things and I'm taking whatever I take from them. You know, sometimes they're not even saying anything related to what I'm thinking about. And I just hear like one word in their sentence and I flip that for me and I make it work. And that's kind of what I hope you do with my podcast. And honestly, I don't give a fuck if you do. I don't, I don't give a fuck because I, I can't, I, I can't. I can't do anything for you. I can't help you in any way. Like, I can just do my shit and put it out there and just fucking hope it works for me. You know, and if it works for me, I'm going to keep posting. I'm going to keep posting when the when the shit's low and when the shit's high. Like, this is life, dude. I, I mean, this is life. You know, sometimes I'll be walking around and I'll just have like a moment where I'm like, oh, what the fuck? I'm like, what am I doing? Like, these buildings are here. These trees are here. People walking around like, what is happening? And I'm like, yo. This is just life. Like, it's so weird. I don't know if anyone else has. I know people do because I've seen TikToks. Like, I know some people think like this. Not everyone. You might not be thinking about this stuff. But, dude, sometimes I'll literally just be sitting there and I'm like, damn. This is real life. And it's, it's fucking weird, bro. Like, I, I think it's weird. Oh, and another reason that, like, meditation is fucking important is because, like, you hear all these things like lucid dreaming, astral projection, you know, uh, where people just, like, fly through the universe in their mind. That's, like, a thing. That's, like actually a thing though you know people like go out of their body in their in their mind or, or i don't know what exactly what it is but imagine being able to like close your eyes just say, like right now if i just close my eyes and i fucking went somewhere else like that's a fucking superpower and it's a superpower that you can attain that i can attain and I, i'm going to attain it like i don't know if i i don't know if i fully believe in astral projection i don't know if my soul leaves my body but I am a very, very firm believer um, that you can go places in your mind, you know? I mean, think about it. Like, if you were to say, hey, or right now, think of an elephant. Picture an elephant in your head. Where the fuck is that elephant? It's in your head, but, like, where is it? Where, where is it? Is it in your head? Is it in your eyes? Like, do you see it? Like, wh it's just there, you know? And it's the same thing. Like, when you travel in your, in your mind, you, like, fly through the universe in your head. The only reason I know this is possible is because... I smoked this thing one time and it lasted 15 minutes and um well it lasted an hour for me but typically lasts 15 minutes so you probably know what this is i've taken that i've broken through i've seen what that looks like i've seen what i have felt that i've experienced it and i know it's real because i felt that for myself i know it's true you know it happened and i relate it to trying to download an entire fucking supercomputers worth of information onto a five gigabyte thumb drive it's not possible i just know it happened i can sort of kind of recall what it was kind of like not really but i know it happened and i remember being so fucking just 
there's no way there's no way to describe it. There's there's zero way to describe it. Um I'm just gonna say it's it's called DMT. I don't know, if you if you don't know what it is, it's called DMT. And it it's so unbelievable. Like it it's so fucking crazy. Like it there's no way to describe it. You just have to look it up. Like, look, I mean, there's no there's no videos that I've seen online. I've seen a lot that actually do it justice on, like, what it's like. It's just not, it's not a thing. You can't, you can't know. <laughs> Sorry. You can't know unless you do it. So if you really want to know, I guess you would have to do it. Uh, I'm not saying to do it. But, um, you don't believe in fucking magic. You don't believe in, like, fucking like Harry Potter level shit. It's a thing. I don't think it happens like this. Like, you can't, like point at something and a tree falls down like i don't think that's like a thing but in your head magic is possible it's very very possible anyway going back to meditation um when people work out their body like i want to i want to frame this in a way so if you're not like sold on this shit i'm going to sell it to you right now you work out your body you know you go for walks you go to the gym you hit bench press and you want to build a big chest so you hit you do push-ups you do bench press you do cable crossovers you know you do fucking all the things and eventually you build a nice chest it's the same exact shit with your brain, dude. Your your mind. You have to work the mind. You wanna you wanna have a a strong, dependable mind. You have to work the mind. And the way you work the mind, the way the same way you hit bench press for your chest, you meditate. You meditate to work your brain. There's no other extra. I mean, there probably are, but meditation is the ultimate one. It's like, yo, I could either do these like cable crossovers or I could fucking hit bench press. You know, bench press is gonna work. Cable crossovers will also probably work. It's gonna take way longer, and it's just. You might as well bench press to get more bang for your buck. It's the same shit with meditation. Like, there isn't a way around it. You know, taking walks and being mindful is good. And it's great. It, it, it's a great supplement. You should do both. But meditation is a non-negotiable. It's a fucking non-negotiable. You know, I'm saying this fucking one week. Not even a week in, like... Out of a week, I've meditated, like, f five times. Which is fucking more than I've done in, in months. Like... You need to meditate. It's a thing. You know, and... And I think that, I don't know where this world's going and how I said earlier how social media is like dying apparently. I'm hoping the toxic side of that dies, like the fucking influencers and stuff. Like the ones who like aren't really doing much other than just like being entertaining. I hope they're not like such a, a like a high status. Like I feel like they need to come back down to the ground a little bit. But people who are like doing shit like for real and like actually influence, like actually influencing people, like people like Joe Rogan's podcast, like Lex Freedom's podcast, like that stuff actually influences people, like really influences people in a way where it's different than like Noah Beck doing a TikTok dance or you know shooting a content at the Zoo Culture Gym. You know that that's not influencing. That's fucking just entertainment. There's a difference, you know. And I hope the entertainment business starts to die a little bit, and people who are trying to do something real here i hope that remains and it doesn't even need to be at the crazy extent but like i don't know man i after a week of meditating on my own i've just found that like dude that that is it that is it and through some of the the battling of thoughts that i've had i've also came to, to a certain thought that was like i don't know what i like you know the other day i was I was like, yo, I'm, I'm into mountains. I like lakes. I like nature. But then I went to New York, and I was like, yo, this is fucking awesome. And I was like, wait a minute. Do I like the city? And I was like, wait. I don't know. Like, I don't know what I like, because everything... Everything since I can remember... Like, social media has been a thing since 2015. Like so, like, high school for me. That's the last... I mean, for me, I don't remember shit. I don't remember jack shit from, like, anything before high school anyway. So all I remember is a life of social media. A life of looking cool. A life of trying to look cool and look awesome in front of people. And that's, like, all I can remember being like. And so I don't know. Like, do I like hiking? I don't know. I sort of like... I don't like hiking as much as I thought I did, honestly. Like, I thought I liked hiking way more. And then I went on a few hikes, and I was like, damn, bro. I mean, this is cool, but, like, <laughs> I'm, like, going on this hike to get this photo. So, yeah, that, that was interesting, you know, that... I don't know what I like, and um, that revelation I had of, of not living for the picture, you know, not walking around the city to take a picture, but rather just walk around the city, period, that's, that's so weirdly difficult for me, 
Um, and I think that's a, it's a result of social media, you know, of comparing yourself constantly to people. And when you see people's Instagrams just filled with fucking travel pictures. And, that's, and you're like, wow, that must be the life. I'm telling you right now, I'm living that life right now. I'm doing that. I'm exactly doing that. 100%. The only difference is I'm not being paid for it. But there's almost no difference, you know. And it's not at, at all what you think it is. It is not at all what you think it is. Pictures are great, you know. It's a one moment thing. You don't see the fucking four four mile hike where they just sat there and complained the whole time, or it's just not it's not that glorious, you know. The picture is glorious. The picture is glorious. There's a difference. The picture was glorious. The moment was glorious. The two second moment. But everything else was the same. Everything else was normal. Normal shit. Just like, just like you do. You know, when you want to hike and you take a cool picture. It's just like that. There's no difference. It's not like you're glowing and fucking music, you know, there's like chorus singing around you and fucking like, it's not like that, you know? And for me, I had to, I had to do it. I had to do it to know. And that's how I do life. You know, I have to do the thing to know what it's really like. There's no other way. You can't take other people's word for it and just, I mean, you can, but you're not going to know. You're not really going to know. You're not going to experience it. And you should. You should experience it. You should, you should try this. You should try intense introspection like this. Save up a couple grand and fucking go travel by yourself. And see, like, what happens. Because I'm not even... I'm not even done. Like, I'm, I don't even know if I'm halfway done. I've been going total now for, like, t- a month, maybe. Like, two weeks on, two weeks off, two weeks on so far. And I haven't even gotten yet to the mountains I wanted to get to originally. Like, this whole trip was literally so I could get to fucking... Colorado or Montana and I, ha- I literally haven't gotten there yet. I'm leaving today like right after this podcast I'm literally gonna walk to my car and drive to Montana or wherever I'm going. I, f- I still haven't decided it's so far away It's like ugh, It's gonna be a few days to drive, but I'm so excited. I'm so nervous and I don't know what to expect and I don't want to try and put something in my head of what to expect I just want to get there and just do you know and just do and um I don't have like expectations like I used to. And that's freeing as fuck, honestly. Not thinking a, a thing's gonna be a certain way because of whatever reason. And then usually being let down because it's almost never like what you think it's gonna be. Because you haven't done it. You know, you haven't done the thing. When you do the thing, when you do lots of things, you realize shit. You know, you realize, damn, nothing is as fucking magical as you think it is. You know, it, it just isn't. Um, doesn't mean it sucks doesn't mean it's not good it just means it's not that thing it's not what you thought it was you know and it's good to know it's good to know and there's no way to know that unless you do it so do it go do that thing go start the business because you're not gonna know you're not gonna know what it's really like until you do it and that's like the one the craziest big thing that i know i realized that like everyone knows this you know this. You know this right now. You know what I'm saying. Like, it's, it's not like I'm saying anything new. Like, you've heard a million people say this, but it's a fact. You, you don't know what it's like until you do the thing. At the moment right now with, um, in regards to my life, with balance and working and editing and, and making money and all that shit. I, I have, like, two sides to me. One side's, like, Eckhart Tolle. Like, he'll fucking just walk around and, like, look at trees and it's beautiful. And, like, yeah, that's a good, men- that's a good um, mindset to be in. Coupled with, like, the work ethic of Gary Vee and people who, like, do shit. Like, yo, do things. Do things. But also have good awareness. I, I sort of had this weird thought and I was like, yo. What if I'm... What if I'm not... What if that, like, hustle nature that people are starting to label as, like, toxic, like, toxic hustle, what if that's just me? Like, what if I just, that, what if that's just me? Like, I just am that way. I just need to be doing something, need to be working. And, like, should I deny that? Like, if that's my natural equilibrium, you know, that's why I always come back to him. Like, what is my equilibrium? What do I come back to every time? You know, and that's, like, what my, that's what I am. And, um... Maybe, maybe balance is not what it is for me. Maybe balance is not what I should be chasing. Like, right now, at least, I'm willing to put in that extra work, to put in those extra hours, you know, where balance is not the main priority. Balance can be it later. I can work on balance later. But <laughs> when, when people, like, for example, in the gym, people who go in and just fucking 
go hard for five years. They go fucking hard. They go to the gym every day, eat, drink the protein shakes, eat chicken breast, broccoli chicken, and they do that. And then a few years later, they go, damn, bro, that wasn't really necessary. Like, just work on balance. But, like, the thing is, you had to do that first to have that awareness. You had to go and be obsessed first. And I think that's really actually important. I think you do need to get obsessed first. I don't think going in, working on balance first is the way to do it. I think you get obsessed first. And then you realize, okay, how can I taper this down to where I can still get all the benefits without all the drawbacks, you know? And I noticed that with fitness, you know, now I'm just, I'm reaping the benefits of, of, of my obsession. I worked hard for seven fucking years and now I don't have to work that hard to keep up a good body, you know? And I don't have to worry and stress about it anymore because I already did all that. I stressed enough. I stressed for seven years about my body. I don't stress that much anymore. I've been working like at the Cape. I, I, I actively didn't flex at the beach and it was the first time I've ever done that. Like I've, I actively let my stomach just sit there and not suck in or flex or anything even like there were hot girls you know and i didn't i like sat there and i was like okay i can do this i can do this walked past them i was like okay and nothing happened nothing fucking happened they didn't sit there and point at me and laugh they didn't look at me weird no one fucking knows that shit's all in your head it's all in your head you know and i'm rebuilding myself i'm rebuilding myself um from a toxic place a toxic place that is obsession obsession leads to toxicity and when you hit that level of toxicity, that's when you dial it back. But before that, I think it's necessary. I think you need to be obsessed first. And as I said earlier with like the, like the generations below us, and this, is, this actually doesn't even just go for the generations below, but like, for example, the hippies. I love hippies. I think they're great. I also think that 50% of the hippies are fake. I think they're fakes. I don't think they actually vibe the way they say they vibe. And that's, I'm talking about the people who get fucking butterfly tattoos, get a van, um, you know, wear a head, a bandana on their head and fucking wear a bunch of rings and nose rings and shit like that. Like that's fake. It's false. And you know, and they, and those people, they know it's false. You know, that you can tell when people's vibes are genuine and real and they actually practice their craft. They actually meditate. They actually go and walk in nature and they actually do those things. And maybe they do wear bandanas and rings and fucking tattoos and whatever. But there's a difference between those people and the ones who just fake it. The ones who just wear the clothes and just wear the, the bodysuit of the hippie. But they're not. You know, like, you have to put in work at some point in your fucking life. You need to put in that work. And I don't, I don't know if that's meditation. I don't know if it's fitness. I don't know if it's fucking studying. But at some point, if you want to be a master at whatever that is, if you want to be a master at fucking being a hippie and doing nothing, you need to put in the work of getting your brain and your mind to a place where you're cool with that and you're truly at ease doing that because not everyone is i tried that i tried being a hippie doing fucking like nothing and it didn't work for me and it's because my mind's not in the right place because i didn't work on my mind first and i didn't do the things that are required to be and truly be a hippie it's hard you don't just show up and be a hippie it's hard to just sit around and vibe and listen to music all day and not feel like you're losing in life it's really hard for some people if that's you, if you're pretending to be a hippie, you're, you're an imposter, essentially, and you're faking it, then you probably, this is probably speaking to you, because you're probably like, damn, he's fucking right. And if that's true, then go and do those things. What do hippies actually do? What makes a hippie, you know? Or whatever it is, like, whatever that thing is, like, quit faking it. You know, there's only so far it's going to take you. you. At the end of the day, you have to go home to yourself. You have to sit in bed with yourself. You have to be with yourself and be okay with that. And if at the end of the day, you're not cool with that, that's a shit fucking life. And that's a shit, that's a shit life. And it's a long life. It's a really, really long life. And so I'm going to leave it there because that's really the message I had. And I've said it like 16 times now on the same podcast, like 45 minutes of me saying the same exact shit over and over again. But I want to drill this through my head and your head that like, you need to put in that work, like do the work, do the dirty work. No one really shows that because it's not that interesting and no one wants to like watch that, I guess, or acknowledge that that's like what it takes to get there. But it is. I don't care what it is. You know, Joel just started his first game at the battery and he scored and it was a winning goal and he won man of the match. And you would look at that maybe and go, damn, that he's so fucking, he's just so, he's so good. Like, of course he did that. No, dude, this man literally put in so much fucking work. It's disgusting how much work he put in. He was obsessed. He is obsessed. And that's why he's at where he's at. You don't just show up 
as a 22 year old kid and become man of the match in a first professional game that's not a thing you know that's work and it's, it's work and like all that coming together you know you don't see all the hours all the fridays he spent in the gym you know all of the fucking days where his friends are on the boat and he's playing soccer like you didn't see that and he didn't even talk about it because it wasn't necessary you didn't need to talk about it but like that's what it takes you know if you want to be the best at something or you want to even be good at something like it requires a certain amount of work and you have to be willing to put in that work and with that i'm gonna i'm gonna close out here if you're struggling right now i'm telling you right fucking now make meditation make controlling your mind one of your goals if not your number one goal it should be your number one goal that's what i'm finding it needs to be up there it needs to be fucking up there in your top three so make meditation make breath work like all that shit it can fucking save your life it, it's saving my life right now as i speak and i'm telling you right now it will be the reason that i fucking win it'll be the reason that i fucking free myself from the matrix the matrix of your fucking mind the matrix of your mind can be unlocked with meditation i'm telling you right now so yeah, go do the thing. Go do the thing. Go experience. Go live. Go meditate. Do the shit. Peace.